Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. So before we dive into this week's episode, I just want to let you guys know that if you would like to support the show, DIY Socially Conscious Comedy, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a monthly patron for only $2 a month. All right, let's dive right into this week's episode. Currently, the Department of Homeland Security, or DHS, when it wants to sound like a package delivery service that is sure to break anything and everything fragile under the guise of safety, or if it wants to sound like a transition technology between VHS and DVD, well, they are currently working on a database collecting information on media influencers that might be talking about any event related to the DHS or just, well, any event. Earlier this month, the DHS announced plans to, quote, track more than 290,000 global news sources, as well as social media in over 100 languages, including Arabic, Chinese, and Russian, for instant translation into English. The successful contracting company will have 24-7 access to a password-protected media influencer database, including journalists, editors, correspondents, social media influencers, bloggers, etc., in order to identify any and all media coverage related to the Department of Homeland Security or a particular event. Uh, anything related to DHS or a particular event? What particular event? Where? Any particular event? Okay, so you just mean life in general. On Facebook, that includes those of you that just click interested on events and then never show up. Okay, look, your artist friends know who you are, we are watching, and we are very disappointed in you. I mean, media influencer sounds like a job title you'd see at like a tech startup. You know, someone that, that just pretentiously tells you why Twitter is better than Facebook and, and how you need to hashtag particular things. It also sounds like someone that uses media sources like television, radio, print to get you to buy into a particular agenda or product. So like corporate media, you know, is the, is the DHS going to put Don Lemon and fucking Anderson Cooper on the in their database? Huh? Is there is there room for shills or just people doing real journalism? But they describe media influencers as any blogger, correspondents, journalists, etc. So anyone that says anything about anything is on this database. It's so basically humans and like six very chatty and gossipy robots. And the contractor that gets this job gets 24-7 access to all of this information. What the DHS can guarantee, though, is that the Fourth Amendment will not be included in this database. Another bill that was passed by lawmakers that will not include, be including a discussion on the Fourth Amendment is the Cloud Act. The Clarifying Overseas Use of Data Act, or the Cloud Act, allows the trade of domestic data from U.S. servers to international law enforcement agencies, from emails, call logs, videos, and tons of data is now subject to criminal investigation, not only in the states with agencies like the DHS, but also every other law enforcement agency in the world, proving once and for all that Snapchat has been a snitch for the government saving all of your nudes in a folder called Leverage slash Texas 2010. This bill is incredibly dangerous, but some make the claim that it's not. According to University of Washington Law College professor Jennifer Daskal, this circumvents the mutual legal assistance, which requires diplomatic assistance to matters of data and privacy between international parties. And this can be a lengthy process. Good! Lengthy process means it makes law enforcement show their work. 
you know like every middle school math teacher has asked you to? Even Subway has a process to make their sandwiches. It's not just granted to you because you walked in through the door or crashed through the window. It keeps the credo of innocent until proven guilty. Daskal goes on to say that this bill will not be targeting U.S. citizens or residents. Wait, so, so what about immigrant communities? I mean, some immigrants fear immigrations and custom enforcements busting down their doors, guns a-blazing, and now we have to worry about the bobbies coming in from England with their batons and scalding hot tea. No thank you! Okay, immigrants everywhere have just about had it with this imperialism business. In a retort to Descal, ACLU Legislative Council Nima Singulgani points out that the Cloud Act wouldn't protect human rights activists. Amnesty International has 68 countries that have persecuted, detained, arrested human rights defenders who would now get access to all of that activist data. And it's all determined by the Department of Justice. And the only, only accurate part about that title is of. All right, I know some of you out there are saying, but Krish, our law enforcement wouldn't do that. I mean, they're not going to turn our people to, to oppressive regimes. Okay, well, America is a nation where a marijuana user gets the same sentence as someone that burned an orphanage to the ground. Not only that, but our media, our politicians, and our police have criminalized activism. You think I'm making that up. Oklahoma, Louisiana, North Carolina, Minnesota are just a few of the states that have penalties for nonviolent protest not like harsh penalties okay they get fines from three thousand dollars for teaching people about nonviolent tactics up to ten thousand dollars or 20 years in prison in some states and that's in america the land of the free with the largest prison population in the world so unfortunately i doubt that the cloud act will really be on the side of activists that are championing human rights. And it's, and it's murky at best on robot rights. Now, according to Daskal, this bill will be protecting free speech. But Single Ghani points out that the DOJ says they'll respect the requesting country's free speech laws within their vague criteria for what human rights are. Right. And they also say that the requester has to have credible and articulate facts. And in the world of fake news and loss of trust, you might as well ask them to consider your horoscopes as facts. The really horrifying part about this bill is that it allows for wiretap tapping. And it's the first time these law enforcers can intercept communication in real time. It's the Facebook Live of mass surveillance. Not that Facebook Live isn't that already, but this is arguably worse. Okay, maybe this will encourage Zuckerberg to put a dislike button on his shitty social media platform that we're all addicted to. Daskal says that this bill doesn't authorize foreign data requests, but lifts the legislative bar on disclosures. Which is basically like saying, well, I didn't like say the N-word. I just like sang it in my favorite rap song at a black Baptist church. I thought everybody would appreciate how cool I was being and the level of comfort I was showing in the moment. So how could a bill this horrible get passed? Yeah, I mean, people must have ran up and marched on Congress itself. Sadly, no. Uh, it was attached to an omnibus spending bill after it was barely talked about. They snuck it in like a drunk teenager sneaks into the house after a full night of partying. 
taking their cues from Cambridge Analytica, they snuck something terrible into something that people can't say no to. It is basically the legislative equivalent of putting razor blades in candy. Okay, you, you have ruined the internet, privacy, and clouds for everybody. At this point, Congress only has a few weeks to overturn this bill, but unfortunately, I doubt that they will. Which is going to mean that we are going to have to fight even harder for our privacy. This is the beginning of all of this. And if we want any moments of peace to ourselves to, to protect our activists fighting for basic human rights and our communities, then we all need to join in and fight back against this. Stand beside those dissenters and make our voices so loud that the only way we can be quieted is when we get our privacy back. That's been your forkful of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up uh, on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, and give it a share. Uh, sharing is a great way to help this show. It reaches uh, new audiences that way. Uh, and uh, you get to share it with some friends. You get to share it with some enemies. Anybody that you feel like would enjoy uh, content like this or benefit from, from a, a video like this. And uh, a great way, another great way to really help the show is by becoming a patron. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash haha where you can find all the details about what you're supporting uh, about this show. Uh, I am the only employee of this show, and it takes a very long time to make an episode. Uh, from doing all the research, all the writing, all the editing, uh, all the video filming, it's, uh, it's a multi-person job done by one person. So if you, can, if you can and are able to financially contribute to that, that's awesome. Uh, it all starts at only $2 a month. Go to patreon.com slash haha. I've got live stand-up comedy shows coming up. I am on a cross-country tour with musician Liss Victory. You can, uh, you can, we're, we're headed all over the place, guys. We're right now in the West Coast, so we're going to be uh, making our way back over to the East Coast. Uh, we are coming to... Uh, San Diego, California, San Francisco, California, Los Angeles, California. Uh, we're going to be in Portland, Oregon. We're headed to Salt Lake City, Denver, Colorado. We're all over the place. Uh, if you want to keep up with the tour, if you want to keep up with our, our travels, you can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, you can check out the entire tour schedule and details. If you're in those cities, come hang out with us. We love hanging out with you guys. Uh, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, uh, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums along with my tour dates. Uh, you can download them uh, via any of your favorite music download and streaming services. It's available on iTunes, Pandora, Spotify, Google Play, but the best place, I think, to download uh, DIY artists is on Bandcamp. Uh, and you can check out all my albums on my Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, and you can subscribe to my Bandcamp. And when you do, you get exclusive stand-up comedy and storytelling material each and every month for only five dollars a month uh which is not that expensive and it helps the show and you get a bunch of cool fucking stand-up content that's awesome so you can go to ramen noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com uh and like i said a really great way to help this show is by becoming a monthly patron by going to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha starting at only two dollars a month that is one cup of coffee guys if you can give up one cup of coffee you can help support this show 
uh, go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. You get to see uh, how and why you should support this show. You get to build a community and talk directly to me without any sort of censorship by any other social media platform. Um, and uh, you get to help help me get to, to more cities, my favorite cities and your favorite cities more often. Uh, so go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, I'm also on Steemit. I'm also on Minds. Uh, I'm all over the goddamn place. There's a lot of shit you can follow me on. <laughs> uh, but I truly, truly, truly appreciate you guys uh, liking this stuff, watching this stuff, sharing this stuff. Keep doing that. Tell more people about it uh, because that's how you help independent media grow. Uh, if you can't contribute monthly, there's also an option for a one-time donation. Check out the description and the video below. Uh, and, uh, and I hope to see you guys at a live show. It's always fun to, to meet you guys out on the road. Uh, well, I'm super excited to come all over the country and see you guys. So, uh, that's, uh, that's your forkful of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.